Welcome once again to another Time Value of Money video. I'd like to start by going back to our little table here that has uh, interest factors, computational formulas, and application formulas. And um, in the last video, uh, we saw, uh, we learned about this application formula. And so the interest factor will be present value interest factor for a growing perpetuity. And the computational formula is 1 over R minus G, where R is the opportunity rate of return per period, and G is the growth rate of the cash flows per period. And that's valuable only when R exceeds G, and for reasons explained in the video. And then the application formula is simply the present value of the growing perpetuity is equal to growing perpetuity cash flow number one <clears throat> times the present value interest factor for the growing perpetuity. And um, once again, this multiple cash flow stream, uh, growing perpetuity, um, is, is handled with this interest factor so that this formula will always give us the value uh, one period prior to the first cash flow of the growing perpetuity, which is always the case for our multiple cash flow stream present value interest factors. And in the last video, we also talked about growing annuities. And so the present value interest factor for a growing annuity was shown to be this, 1 over R minus G times in the square brackets, 1 minus 1 plus G over 1 plus R to the nth power, and is the number of uh, cash flows in the growing annuity. And this, too, uh, will always give us, when we use this uh, computational formula cor correctly, in the correct circumstances, it will always give us the value of our uh, growing annuity one period prior to the first cash flow. And... Um, the the uh, actual application formula is right here. Circuit in purple. Present value of growing annuity equals growing annuity cash flow number one times PVIF GA. Now in the last video, um, it's just for clarity we saw that the present value of the growing annuity was equal to C0 times 1 plus G over R minus G times 1 minus 1 plus G over 1 plus R to the nth power. Okay, so what I'm saying here is that... Um, this C0 times 1 plus G, I'll circle that in red, okay. The red doesn't seem to be working. I'll circle it in pink. Okay, that is the same as C1, cash flow at date 1. And therefore, what this becomes is... PVGA equals hmm, growing annuity cash flow number one, that's C1, times 1 over R minus G times 1 minus 1 plus G over 1 plus R to the nth power, to the nth power. Okay, so just showing you that they indeed are the same. Uh, here is growing annuity cash flow one, and that's this, the first one in the series. <clears throat> and then here's the PVIFGA, and that is, of course, right there. Okay, so, so far we've seen seven of uh, these uh, interest factors now. And we have one more to go, and this video is going to focus on the final interest factor. And that interest factor is, just going to erase this quick, 
Um, that interest factor is a future value interest factor for a growing annuity. Future value interest factor for a growing annuity. And um, number eight, future value interest factor for a growing annuity. And the application formula is 1 over, I use lowercase, r minus g times 1 plus r to the nth power minus 1 plus g to the nth power. Okay, we're going to see that that is the uh, actual application formula and and the I'm sorry that's the computational formula here this is the computational formula then the application formula is going to be future value of a growing annuity equals Growing annuity cash flow number one times a future value interest factor for a growing annuity. Okay, so that's going to be our application formula. And that's going to complete our, our entire table there. Uh, future value interest factor, present value interest factor, future value interest factor for an annuity, present value interest factor for an annuity, Present value interest factor for a perpetuity. Present value interest factor for a growing perpetuity. Present value interest factor for a growing annuity. Future value interest factor for a growing annuity. And that completes our table. We'll just run through it again so you can see it if you like and pause. And there it is. Right there. Now, what I want to do in this video at this moment is I want to derive this formula for you. Okay, so oops, so I will go down here <clears throat> and do that. So here's how we do it. In the la in the prior video we saw that well first of all here's what a here's what a growing annuity might look like. Uh, maybe I have a payment of a hundred, one ten, and then one twenty one. That would be a growing annuity. You can see the the growth rate is 0.1 or 10%, right? And um, we see that the cash flow at date one is 100. And at date two, the cash flow is 100 times 1 plus g to the first power. That's at date two. And then at date three, the cash flow is 100 times 1 plus the growth rate squared. And... Uh, it put in date four. Date four would be one thirty three ten, and that would be one hundred times one. Oops, times one plus g cubed. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And so that's a growing annuity. <clears throat> Finite number of cash flows such that each cash flow is a given percentage bigger than the cash flow that preceded it, and there are, are a finite number of those cash flows in the growing annuity. And <clears throat> in the last video, we f saw how to calculate the present value, and now I want to calculate the future value. So here's the deal. In, in this example here, we have cash flows at date 0, 1, 2, three, and four. And by using the present value of a growing annuity f application formula, if the, if the annuity paid 100, you know, the same values I just showed you, those values, those dates, and the present value of that would be as of date zero, one period prior to the first cash flow. Like I refer to this as growing annuity cash flow number one. We didn't have to be that specific with annuities because annuities have a constant cash flow. Same is true <clears throat> with perpetuities. 
<clears throat> constant cash flow. But when we, get, when we get to growing perpetuities and growing annuities, then we have to uh, specify which cash flow and the stream um, of cash flows are we talking about. And it's growing annuity cash flow number one. Okay, And so when we use the application formula, it'll give us the value one period prior to the first cash flow. Here it's date zero. And now I want to make an interesting point. It's actually pretty easy to make this point. And that is, what if we want the value here at date four for this? Well, think about it. All I've got to do is take <clears throat> the value that I have here and move it forward. It's now a single value. All I have to do is move it forward one, two, three, four periods. Okay, or in the general case, I have it. I have to move it forward n periods, where n is the number of uh, cash flows in the, the growing annuity. Well, we already know that the present, we already know the present, oops, the pen isn't working here, I don't know why. We already know the present value interest factor for a growing annuity <clears throat> is equal to 1 over r minus g times 1 minus 1 plus g over 1 plus r, that's 1, to the nth power. And now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this by, well, to get it to go from here to here, um, we have to multiply it by a future value interest factor. Um, and in this case, the future value interest factor which is a function of r and n. r is r. Okay, and n in this case is the same n. It's just that the n here has a different meaning than it did uh, here. Over here, the n is the number of cash flows in the growing annuity. Over here, it's the number of periods we're moving forward to get to the last date, because we're talking about the future value of, uh, of a growing annuity. So now, when I take this and I multiply it by this, I suddenly have a future value interest factor for a growing annuity is what we're getting to. And we'll see that, hmm, what is this? Well, that's just 1 plus r to the nth power. So all I have to do is multiply this term by 1 plus r to the nth power. And when I do that, I get 1 over r minus g. 1 times that is 1 plus r to the nth. And 1 plus r to the n times this. Just note that this is the same as 1 plus g to the nth divided by 1 plus r to the nth. This is the same as 1 plus g to the nth divided by 1 plus r to the nth. So when I multiply this term by 1 plus r to the nth, I'm left with minus 1 plus g to the nth. And this is the future value interest factor for a growing annuity. So it's a different type of proof. We could have done the other type of proof, but I think it's good to see a, a, a different way. Since we did all the hard work in the present value interest factor for a growing annuity, it's good to see that this is the future value interest factor for a growing annuity. And then, of course, the application formula is uh, future value of growing annuity is equal to uh, growing annuity cash flow number one times future value interest factor for a growing annuity. And that's right. This is our application formula uh, number eight that we just saw. And there's the, the proof for it. And... Uh, Thanks for watching.